Hello everybody. My name is Zina Farouk. I am a geotechnical engineer and also a representative for Oasis Geote um, Geotechnical Products. I'm going to be giving you a talk today to introduce our retaining wall analysis program, FRU. So I'm going to start off with who Oasis is. It's just a very brief introduction because we often get asked. Um, Oasis o is uh, wholly owned by Arab and we're a team that has been formed um, back in 1976 to de develop software for in-house and external use and the majority of our developers are engineers um, but in recent years we've added the marketing sales and development staff. The Oasis customers are shown here um, this is a list showing our um, our engineering um, customers and uh, they have used both the engi um, the, soft uh, the structural software and the geotechnical software and this is uh, an example of the kind of packages that we provide the structural packages including GSA and ADSEC the geotechnical packages so FRU is covered there but then of course we've got um, our pile analysis um, packages like um, Pile and Alp. We've got our uh, ground movement and slope stability and packages such as slope PDISP and XDISP. Uh, our FE package, which is safe, and we've got document management software, CAD software, and sustainability software. So I'm now going to go into FRU. What is FRU and how does it work? The objectives of the talk today are um, to help you appreciate the analysis methodology behind FRU appreciate the features of FRU, um, its inputs and outputs and, and um, its graphical features, um, understand the modelling effects in FRU, um, Eurocode 7 is shown here but we've also got advanced modelling effects such as the drain to undrained um, analysis and also understand the capabilities of the program through case studies so after you've gone through all the theory how is it used in practice to start off with, FRU is an embedded retaining wall analysis over the complete construction sequence. Um, it handles earth and water pre pressure calculations at every stage and is suitable for a number of different types of pool, uh, uh, different types of wall. Um, it, we've also recently integrated stability checks into FRU, which um, checks for cantilever and propped walls, and I'll touch upon that in more detail soon. The numerical representation of FRU is shown very simply here. The wall is modelled as a series of elastic beam elements. The salt to each side of the wall is connected to nodes and only horizontal forces are transmitted. Um, but to give you a rundown of how FRU works, and um, FRU is a salt structural interaction analysis, it's quite nice to see um, how the program runs. So it starts by initialising the stresses in the ground then it models the stiffness of the structure in the ground and the ground. Um, movement is generated until out of balance forces come into equilibrium. It checks the stability of the wall and checks the wall loads and props. Now critical to FRU is soil stiffness matrix. Now um, there are two ways of calculating or creating the soil stiffness matrix. One is the FE safe analysis and one is the Mindlin equations. So um, it really depends on the kind of problem that you're doing as to which one you choose and this is really given in more detail um, in the manual which is downloadable from our website. We're often asked, is FRU conservative? Well, in a way, yes, because a number of assumptions have been made. Uh, one is, for example, simplifying the likely effects of wall friction. Another is the simplification of the action of structural supports. And the supports are simplified as they're treated as springs, which are connected to nodes. And the other is that um, the soil stiffness is a linear elastic. Now, initial stages in ground often exhibit the highest stiffnesses, and this isn't represented with this linear elastic model. However, having said that, it compares reasonably well with FE analysis. For example, it's recently been used on the pinnacle to um, validate um, 3D FE analysis. It also, um, it also compares well to empirical analysis. So an FE and analysis can be found, uh, an FE comparison can be found in Series C580 in Appendix A10, um, but a number of 
comparisons have been done internally within Arab and externally with our many customers. Um, there's also been a number of empirical studies. Um, I've stated here Rocco um, with the Ashford Tunnel um, comparison, but there's a recent one in Hong Kong um, which can be made available if you're interested. So moving on, um, the FRU outputs. Now FRU has been worked on extensively um, both by Arab engineers and by our external customers um, to make it useful for reporting, um, basically to make it a relevant engineering tool. And um, both graphical and tabular outputs are available. Um, graphical um, outputs are um, also now available stage by stage. An envelope of results are available. Uh, in terms of tabular output, um, these can be exported into Excel and you can go on to make a number of different types of graph and um, carry out a number of different types of comparisons. So here's an example of, of um, the tabular output. Um, here are stages of the graphical output, as you can see here. And this is a close-up of the tabular output, um, showing the kind of outputs that are given. Um, also, um, it shows the notes and the warning signs. Um, and this information is available from our manual, either from within the program or um, downloadable via PDF. So, FRU 19.0, we've recently made uh, a lot of changes to FRU. Um, and what one of these changes is that data entry is now by level and not by node. So initially you had to have an understanding of how to set up nodes within FRU, um, but now for example you enter your stratigraphy levels, you give information about the construction sequence as for example dig levels and prop levels, and on the basis of that FRU actually automatically generates the nodes for you. So um, you don't need to worry about the node generation stage. And as you can see here, you can either choose the automatic node generation option or if you're interested, for example, in a specific point and you want to make your own node, put your own node in there, you can actually manually override it. As I've mentioned, FRU includes the Starwall stability check. Starwall was previously a separate program because it's based on limit equilibrium methods, but uh, it's now integrated into FRU and um, I'll, I'll touch upon that soon as to why. And on the basis of this, um, of the basis of the Starwall integration, we have toe depth from the limit equilibrium analysis uh, for all construction stages, which is very useful and you can compare um, and contrast and have a look at your most critical construction stage on the basis of this. So, um, just to touch upon Starwall, uh, what is Starwall and how does it work? Starwall, as I mentioned, is a limit equilibrium method, um, unlike FRU, which is a stru sole structural interaction method and it basically checks the stability of a wall for assumed failure mechanism. Now why, um, what is the attraction of putting Starwall into FRU and why did we, uh, why was it done um, by Oasis? Well, um, within FRU, if you were going to set up a model um, and for the nodes to be created, you need to um, specify a wall embedment and sufficient wall embedment is required in FRU to ensure overall wall stability. Now often the way it has been done previously in FRU is that it's been established by trial and error. You'll put a toe depth in or you'd run a star wall check separately. You put it in FRU, you'd run it, see whether it works and either increase it or decrease it accordingly. Now it can be difficult to define the limited stability within FRU and using the FRU output, uh, outputs. Um, uh, so, and the variation of toe level, as I previously mentioned, is constrained by node spacing. So, on the basis of this, by integrating it and uh, and making it a very quick process, it's um, it's it's much quicker, uh, it's much easier to run, and it makes FRU much more efficient. So, the best thing for me to do is to show you the FRU Starwall link, and also to show you how to set up a problem in FRU. So, I'm just going to very quickly set up a problem. You can see this is the this is what happens when you open up FRU. I'm just going to start off a new a new um, a new problem. Um, this is the FRU wizard. This is also a new edition from FRU 19.0, and it just um, as you'll see, it'll make uh, things um, 
it just makes things much easier by allowing you to start off with something in your graphical input and uh, I'll expand on this in a, in a few moments if you just let me Now what I'm doing is I'm input inputting the material properties. I'm just going to set up a very quick problem, a, a reasonably simple one. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll have made ground overlying glacial till. You can also have a varied enode profile, so um, that's quite useful. No cohesion, we'll make this a drained analysis. Okay, okay. and um, for our final stage, uh, it's important we have sand and gravel in there, so. Sanding gravel, uh, unit weight of 20, 1.5. We can also calculate our earth pressure coefficient. So I specified them for the last two stages, but if you have a look here, I'm just going to calculate them. Uh, B to NC. Okay. All right. There you go. So I've put um, the material properties in here, uh, automatic node generation, um, get the nodes, from, uh, get the toe level from stability. Um, this is your um, stage defaults. I'll use the safe method, uh, fixed interface, increase the value. This is based on an actual problem um, that I did. So, okay, now this enables you to start off with your initial condition and um, instead of having to input by hand all these different things um, it, it, it gives you something graphically and um, the reason that this is useful is because FRU enables you to input a lot of your stage information graphically as well so I'll run through now and show you how that's done so we can just check the material properties um, just in case made a typo or you want to um, change anything there. Um, also of interest is a partial factors um, section so you can uh, apply partial factors to KP or soil strength and in the soil strength section um, which has been quite useful for a number of our customers is um, that you can um, factor automatically you've got for example Sirius C580 in there you've got um, you've got the uh, M1 and M2 factor groups for um, EC7 the most recent set and you've got the older EC7 um, case A, B and C and then you've also got BS8002 but you can also add your own factors in accordingly and the same with the direct KP ones but we'll just um, go straight into the graphical interface and start adding stages so that you appreciate how it works Uh, for the initial stage we will just put the stratigraphy in so at 20 I'll have made ground overlying glacial till so I'm just inputting this in here and it's it's very simple to do as you can see it's just from the click of a button so you don't need to worry so much about going to the gateway and uh, again adding the water data is, is the same it's, it's just a simple so I'll just have water at 28.6 okay so that's our initial stage um, we're also going to add a stage here install wall excavate So if I again go to the graphical interface, um, I can dewater here, dewater down to 24. I can dig. We have been asked, you know, is this really um, 
just a set of gizmos um, just to kind of you know um, just set up by the developers to make it look more attractive um, it's it's a bit more than bells and whistles um, and what I mean by this is that the reason this this was encouraged by engineers within Arab uh, is that really it's um, very useful um, for new um, new um, people working within with the package or graduates to pick up uh, once they have the graphical interface option so it's much easier to pick this up than having to go through um, the gateway and type everything in yourself okay at another stage okay so for this stage we'll excavate this is the dig and fill button here um, just click on that uh, right click and we'll excavate down to 23.8 meters and I shall add another stage which is the final condition although this is a simple problem I'm, I'm going to come to a little bit more detail about what fruit can do as more advanced features in a few seconds but um, uh, let's have a look and see. Um, let's change the material properties. So I'm just going to show you here how you can manually input things if if you find the graphical interface a little bit difficult to do, or um, you find it easier to hand. Uh, just put these in by hand. So for example, I'm just going to put a layer of sand and gravel here under the basement slab in the final condition. So. Uh, or I put everything in for sand and gravel so it's just a matter of clicking it down okay so they as you can see you can just check what's happening graphically as well it seems to be going well which is fine um, we're also going to add some surcharges in so I'll have a surcharge in from the initial stage on the left hand side at um, at the top of the problem oh, sorry just forgot to put that in um, Pressure twenty, set one, two, KS. Okay, so that's our surcharge. As you can see, it's appeared here, um, and we need to put our anchors in and basement slabs in. So insert, remove struts. Um, locking in the anchors here at this stage okay and let's have our our slabs for our final condition right so now it just comes for us to check what's going on Check and see. Strut two, yes. Right, that seems to be working just fine. Right, so now we can actually run our Star Wars stability check. So now we've set up the problem. Uh, we put all our materials in. Uh, we've put all the information in. Uh, I'm going to run the stability check here. Um, let's just say the anchor hasn't been locked at that point, so we'll say fixed earth. Uh, run the stability check and here are the outputs um, and as you can see right at the bottom uh, we've got the outputs for the different stages so as you can see the critical stage here is stage 3 uh, with the lowest toe level at 20.63 so now if I go on to generate the nodes as you can see here we've automatically generated the nodes based on the lowest stability uh, I put the rigid boundary level in um, at 12 meters and um, everything's generated so it just goes to analyze it there you go this is our tabular output and if we go to the graphical output you can see we've got our envelope of results as well so we can just check the envelopes so for this specific problem this is the envelope of results or we can just go through stage by stage 
have a look at what's happening. Um, for example, if you're interested in a specific stage, maybe at the toe, you can zoom in and have a look as well. So that was just um, to touch upon what FRU does and, and show you how to set it up and, and, um, and the kind of advances that FRU 19.0 has led to. So that was my FRU demo. Uh, as I mentioned, you can manually override as well. Um, and also batch testing. And um, what this means is that you can set up a number of files based on uh, varied toe depth. So if I go back into FRU, I can just show you here. I can um, cancel my node generation. Yes, I'll cancel everything. And um, I'll go into node generation data. I can override the calculated toe level. I can set a range of levels. So, um, oh, first I have to run the star wall stability check. Okay, so I'll just run the star wall stability check again. Okay. So if I go to node generation data here, override the calculated toe level, set a range of levels, maybe between 20 and 23, and um, maybe I want about three files in there. So what this does is, as you can see, instead of calculating at the toe depth calculated from Starwall, what I'm now doing is I'm setting up a number of different files in through files at different toe depths. So if I apply this and go to generate nodes, what this does is this creates a number of different files. See, four files were created. So basically for varying toe depths from 20 to 23, you can now go and open different FRU files at different toe depths and compare values, say, for bending moment, compare and contrast and see how the wall is performing in terms of um, movements and so on and so forth. So again, um, We've had very good feedback from that tool and a lot of people have found it very useful. So now I'm going to go into more detail um, and just help you understand the more advanced features of FRU. Um, FRU enables you to model special effects such as the undrain to drain transition. Uh, it, model, it helps you model props and it, when you, well, you can model props you can also model relaxation and creep. Um, you can model thermal effects and props. Um, you can model sloping ground and model berms. And um, also, it's possible um, to use EC7 with FRU. Um, I'm going to um, touch upon how it's done currently, but we're also working on um, working on uh, providing a more automated process for this, which should be available um, by um, over the next few months. So to start off with, the undrained to drain transition. Now the manual sequence here is shown and it can be slightly complicated and quite onerous. Uh, so what FRU does in, is that it now calculates undrained pore pressure profiles um, based on the modif modified cam clay model or um, the more cool on path for you and it makes this uh, the sequence shown here much much quicker to do. And the way it's done is as you can see this is a more cool on um, path and uh, it the blue line um, shows the effective stress and um, the dark blue line uh, or the the diamonds here, the dark blue diamonds show the total stress. Now the undrained pore pressure is the difference between the two so FRU calculates this automatically for you and this is actually done through the materials table so um, the way you do this is that you um, assign a drained material to the undrained material and um, by doing this you tell the computer which which stress path it should calculate according to. So now that you understand it a little bit um, you can actually look, go into the manual and understand it a little bit more detail and apply it. Okay, um, it enables, FRU also enables you to model props um, uh, I showed you uh, in my brief example how to model anchors, but you can model props with pre-stress, props with stiffness, a moment's restraint or a moment. Uh, you can model relaxation and creep. So creep is strain as a, at a constant stress and um, it's often modeled by structural engineers by just increasing your E or Young's modulus value. But uh, this can't be done in FRU and the reason is that FRU uses a tangent modulus. So just changing the stiffness would um, say for example in this, this, gra this graph here follow a line from A to D and that's not exactly what we want to follow. We want to follow a line from A to C. So the way you can do this is FRU is actually quite simple. Uh, and it works quite well. And this is by, uh, to follow A to C, 
you uh, apply relaxation first, so you follow a line from A to B, and then um, you apply the long-term stiffness, or uh, the long-term stiffness um, comes in anyway um, to reach equilibrium, and that follows a line from B to C. So it's an equivalent path for creep. So wall relaxation is specified in the analysis data, and um, the wall EI and stress in the wall is reduced by a specified percentage. So what this means is basically the wall relaxation can be simply simply calculated by a ratio of um, Young's modulus values, and the way to do this is given in the manual. The system is then out of equilibrium, so um, the system has to move from the line from B to C. Um, so the increase in E um, still applies and it eventually gets you through the creep path. The similar effect is required for props but it's not automatic so initially you put two props in and at a creep stage you remove one of the props. You can also model sloping ground um, and here it shows you how to do that so um, you apply a surcharge but also beyond that you need to include a lateral force at the top of the wall which can be done with a small prop and uh, modeling berms um, this is very popular there is a method in Sirius C580 which tells you how to model berms um, Arab engineers have looked at this in more detail uh, a simplified method is applied on the basis of this in the Fru manual um, so you calculate a reduced KP value for the perm, berm soil um, and the elastic effect of the excavation is modeled However, the berm weight doesn't contribute to the passive resistance um, in soil beneath the berm. And the way this is modeled is actually by reducing the level um, that um, the soil um, KP is applied. So the reducing the level here um, of this surcharge. But um, the way to do this really is, is given in much more detail in the manual. and It'll help you understand it as well. There's a more rigorous method based on calculating revised KP values or method of slices. Um, to be honest, Arab engineers have looked at this and they've done comparisons and in most cases the simplified method compares very well but obviously if you do have a very big berm uh, we would advise you to do a sensitivity analysis. And finally in terms of props you can model, model thermal effects. Um, now thermal effects are the expansion and contraction of slabs and props due to temperature effects and these do have significant consequences and the effect is um, basically an applied strain so um, this can be applied in FRU um, using a fixed end force or a prop and this really the type of um, the type of prop you apply depends on whether the wall is rigid or flexible so if you've got a rigid wall you apply force and if you've got a flexible wall you don't apply force but you apply a displacement So that covers um, basic modeling methods. There are more methods, for example, uh, modeling of shafts and so on and so forth, and these are covered in much more detail in the manual, so um, please do look at that if you can and you are interested. So I'm now going to come on to EC7. EC7 is a guide to limit state geotechnical design. Um, this is just a very quick overview, um, and if you want more detail about how this can be done, um, there's a recent webinar which covers it. Um, but for embedded retaining walls in the UK, design approach one has mainly been used. For retaining walls, um, generally the A or action factors and M, material factors, are what we're predominantly interested in. So on the basis of design approach one, we're really looking at A1 and A2 and M1 and M2. And M1 and M2 are already provided in um, in the through partial factors option which I showed you a few minutes ago but um, A1 and A2 now um, currently have to be inputted or by the user uh, but we will look to automating that as well soon now the EC7 partial factors as you can see A1 factors are shown here as 1.35 for permanent unfavorable actions and 1.5 for variable unfavorable actions and 1.3 for variable unfavorable actions as uh, for um, the set A2. So how do you apply this in FRU? Well the soil parameters are automatically applied so for example if you know that you want to design according to design approach 1 combination 1 what you would do is you would apply the M1 factors in FRU and run your analysis. So these, um, these apply the partial factors to characteristic strengths. 
But in terms of the action values, uh, the action um, partial factors, uh, for combination one, for example, if you were to run an unfactored analysis, um, you would apply a factor of 1.11 to the variable action and then factor the final fx by 1.35. Now, how did we get to that and how did that happen? Well, Arab engineers have had much discussion about this um, and they've come to a conclusion that um, both passive pressures and active pressures should be treated the same and these should be treated as unfavorable permanent actions and the reason for this is the single source principle in that passive pressures and active pressures uh, are both sourced from gravity and this makes them unfavorable permanent actions. So on the basis of this variable actions inputted um, have to be um, have a final a uh, final factor of 1.5. So what we do is, um, what um, Arab engineers do is that they apply a factor of 1.11 to their variable actions and they then they multiply everything which comes out of the analysis by 1.35. So by multiplying their in internal initial factor by 1.11 by 1.35 they eventually get to a variable unfavorable factor, uh, action factor of 1.5 which is fine. Uh, in terms of their permanent unfavorable actions, seeing that both passive pressures and active fresh pressures are permanent unfavorable permanent actions, they can multiply all the effects by 1.35 to get their design embedment length. So that is how they deal with combination one. In terms of design approach one combination two, they factor the sole parameters and variable actions by 1.3 and then the bending moment and shear force results are actually their design values because because well there is no permanent unfavorable action factor. So that covers EC7 and what we can do now so currently as I said you have an automated process for for uh, material factors and um, you have to input your um, action factors but we're currently working on rearranging partial factors um, according to the design approach so for example even in the materials input instead of having choose, to choose M1 or M2 you would just choose design approach 1 combination 1 and M1 would automatically connect with that. Um, also we're uh, planning on offering partial factors on actions so that we will automate the whole process currently discussed and we're planning on offering partial factors for star wall because it's a limit equilibrium analysis we're currently just putting SLS values in so to offer the EC7 partial factors for star wall would be useful so a webinar should be available soon and um, watch the space for that so in summary I've covered um, a number of modeling methods and I've covered how FRU would be used in conjunction with EC7 to help you realize the more advanced features of FRU and help you understand what it can do but really the best way to understand what FRU can do is to look at case studies and see how it's been used in industry. So, so case studies, um, I'm just going to touch upon now some, some very useful case studies. There are two that I'm going to cover today. I'm going to start with the UCL Hospital um, because UCL Hospital um, is a very good case study to show how FRU is used within a holistic retaining wall problem and how FRU can be used in conjunction with the other OASIS programs to come to a result. So for the UCL Hospital, uh, it was proposed to be constructed in central London um, and obviously in a very dense, um, densely populated urban area. And as you can see here from the diagram to your left, um, it's in very close proximity to Rain Institute and there were also other restrictions and the restriction was that it was due um, due to requirements to locate a service lift there are tight space restrictions that affect the wall thickness so the Arab engineers proposed to construct a 600 mil diameter hard soft board second pile wall and um, the smaller pile diameter of 600 mil in the um, this area was required um, and the wall was required to be propped um, temporarily at two places. Now if I just touch upon the analysis, um, the effects of the movements of the Rain Institute piles due to excavation in front of the the effects of movements on the Rain Institute piles due to excavation in front of the Sakan pile wall were assessed in an iterative manner. Now what does this mean and how does this work? Well initially a through analysis was run 
on um, the UCL construction and out of that um, the horizontal ground movements and the vertical stresses were fed into two programs. The horizontal ground movements were fed into ALP to look at the lateral behaviour of the rain institute pile and the vertical stresses were fed into pile um, to look at the settlement and behaviour of, of the pile. Um, axial stresses were fed out of pile and this was fed into ADSEC which looks at the nonlinear behaviour um, of the cross section of the pile and um, the moment was get, gotten out of ALP to look again feed into the nonlinear behaviour of the actual cross section of the Rain Institute pile. From this a cracked EI was given to ALP and an iterative answer was produced. Now you might think that this looks very onerous and quite difficult to do but actually because all of them use the gateway system they all comply to the same system. You can quite easily copy and paste from inputs in the material tabs and so on and so forth. Um, the Arup engineers commented on on how quick this was to do. Um, I think this analysis took about half a day, so it was still very quick, despite you know the extensive type of analysis that it was. So um, moving on to from the UCL case study, I'm just going to cover the pinnacle very briefly. Um, this was an example of extreme design and um, as I'm sure you're aware um, the Pinnacle is a development of a 62-storey building in the City of London. The existing basements and ground levels across the site will be deepened and a new side-wide basement constructed. The proposed building will be founded on a combination of piles founded in the London clay and thanet sand strata. So for the embedded retaining wall design, the design of the hard firm second pile retaining wall um, uh, was done using FRU. It was designed in accordance with BSA 1002 and Sirius C580. Um, so an SLS analysis was done and a ULS analysis was done. For the vertical load analysis, um, which considers both total and effective stress design, the input stresses were taken from the FRU analysis as well. So FRU analysis not only was used in itself, but it was fed into the vertical load analysis. So um, just to kind of give you a rundown of the problem. Um, the bright blue wall here shown down um, down in the south here, south side of, of, of the of um, the plan um, is, is what was analyzed and in the first stage you install the wall and construct the capping beam, you excavate and install the temporary prop, you excavate and install another temporary prop, um, you excavate formation, um, construct the basement snabs, um, remove the temporary prop and construct the brown, ground floor stab, remove the temporary prop and construct the basement stab. And so that gives you an idea of the construction sequence. Now I'm just going to go through one analysis and one analysis run just to show you the kind of outputs that FRU produces. But to be honest, for this for this study uh, and for the analysis of the retaining wall, there were a number of ULS and SLS outputs. So as you can see, you start off with the initial condition, the installation of the wall, excavation to ground floor slab, um, installation of prop and excavation to the basement slab, uh, install a prop again, um, construct the slabs, and the long-term case. So this is where the undrained to drain transition comes in very useful. So that just briefly covers the different types of analysis. So um, as you can see, um, I've just really touched upon what FRU can do. Um, it's been a very, very quick overview. Um, started off with the theory, moving on to how you set up a problem and how you analyze in the graphical outputs, um, the specifics of modeling different effects, um, be it for, for example the different types of props you might model or undrained drain transition, uh, modeling according, according to Eurocode 7 and FRU, um, and plan changes that we're making to FRU to enable you to model more easily according to Eurocode Code 7, and also case studies. Um, we've got two case studies here, but to be honest, there, there are a number of case studies, both internal and external to Arup, and if you are interested in validation case studies, I can also make them available. And um, it would be nice to note here that even for the pinnacle, for example, the outputs of the pinnacle analysis were used to verify um, 3D L S Steiner analysis. So as well as just um, comparison to empirical data, there's also been um, case study comparison to um, actual 3D analysis data, and it gives good comparisons there. So what next? Uh, you might be interested uh, in in this program, but 
would probably obviously want to find out much more uh, and in more detail. You can download the PDF manual from the website. Uh, webinars are available uh, which give details on how to set up the problem and the theory behind FRU. Um, we've also got uh, a website uh, with tef technical FAQs. You can email us directly, um, telephone support. Oasis actually has their own um, YouTube t channel as well. So, for example, if you just type in YouTube and Oasis software, you should get onto their channel. Um, and if you do get onto their channel, you can have a look at all the previous webinars and online training movies. And the on online training movies are very helpful. Um, because they show you how to set up the problem and how to analyze things and and, um, and so it'll help you understand how things can be done. So it just goes for me to say uh, thank you very much um, as this is a recording today that I'm doing for you um, please you know uh, direct any questions um, to me via email. Um, you can email me directly at zina.farouk at arab.com so um, Zena is spelled Z double E and for Norman A um, dot F for Freddy A R for Roger double O K um, at Arab dot com. Alternatively, just give us a call at the number that I've previously shown here, or email Oasis at Arab dot com, and um, anything relevant would re be redirected towards me. So um, thank you very much for listening, and um, I look forward to getting a lot of questions from you and. Um, and um, please feel free to email us with any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.